the dirt on Tulsa. You got it. Hey everybody, welcome to Tulsa Music Stream. My name's Scott Squires. This is Nine, and that's Jana Squires Hello. right over there, the blonde. Good day. Um, Hi. It's a it's an odd episode today, just for the fact that we're doing it on a Saturday at 1 p.m. So it's normally not our time slot, which we don't really have a time slot. But today is an exception because we are be calling uh, Mark le- Mark Storacci, a legend. And yes. um, Switzerland. It's so nighttime. it's going to be a, an international phone call. It's nighttime there. It's uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So like we set. literally will be streaming in the night. Be like what eight <laughs> streaming in the night for I love sure. That. For yes. sure. Yes. Yep. So yeah, Mark Storacci has agreed to come on with us live today, and we're so appreciative of him doing that. I believe it's like eight o'clock over there in Switzerland. We are live with him, so feel free to submit your questions in our chat. We will get to them as best we can. We have a lot of questions from Mark ourselves. It greatly helps us if you help share the stream. Uh, We want to get a lot of numbers in here for Mark so that he can feel the love all the way from the USA over here, all the way to Switzerland. So share the stream, get in here, get your questions for Mark, and I'd say we call him up right now. Does that sound good to you, Scotty? Sure. I'll just... uh, Getting my everything focused here. I get sure. on the uh, the page. Sure. If you've everything. got some things you need to do, we can we oh, can we're talk good. for a minute. All right. Let's go ahead and dial him up. Thank you guys again for joining us today, <clears throat> Saturday afternoon on Tulsa Music Stream. We're getting ready to call Mark Storacci, the lead vocalist from the legendary band Crocus, and uh, we're just going to let him go as long, long as he wants to. So yeah, I'm just going to listen comes. beeps. Yeah, because it's international. International phone call right here. Uh, hello, hello. Hey, Mark Storacci. This is uh, Scott Squires from the Tulsa Music Stream. How are you doing? I'm fine. I can see you guys. I've got you on the screen. Awesome. Hello, Mark. It's great. Hello, hello. Oh, hey, 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 could could you uh, could you turn your uh, volume down? How are you doing? Oh yeah, there's a delay, right? Yes, yes there is. Uh, okay. Okay, mine's down. I'm just hearing you over the phone now. Perfect. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. So how are you, Mark? You doing okay? I'm fine, Jana. Great. Jana, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. I, uh, I'm Kirk. Is you, it? You no, know, it's, yes, it's Brian. Yes. My friends call me Nine. You can call me Nine as well. <laughs> you're, you're my friend Okey now. Okie doke. <laughs> <laughs> how, how is it in Switzerland well, tonight? We, Switzerland is very wet very tonight wet. and cold again, wow. unfortunately. That's too bad. It's pretty warm here. Uh, it's We've had a little bit of rain this week, but not, not too bad. So, Mark, we're going to jump right into this. Scott has a lot of really great questions for you. Some you've probably answered before, but some we hope that maybe they'll be new and fresh for you. So I'm going to turn it over to Scott. Yeah, we're we're going to dive into oh. you know, your history. I've been a huge fan of yours, and um, you know, I've purchased many of your albums, so I know a little bit about your history and everything. And and uh, so we've done cool. some we did some homework and some research and everything, and found some really cool, <laughs> interesting things to talk cool. about. But uh, first of all, I wanted to congratulate could, could you. Could you uh, could you turn up the volume on from your end a little bit? Uh, sure, sure. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you know, I've been in rock and roll so long, my ears are weak. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we'll try to talk loud. Yeah, we'll just talk louder. Um, first of all, I wanted to congra- okay. I, I want to congratulate you on your uh, platinum album in uh, Switzerland. Your um, your uh, Adios Amigos uh, live album. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, unfortunately, it marks the end of of an era, the end of a band, and and unfortunately, we're in a co- corona situation because we were looking forward to you know doing the stateside bit, you know, the USA, Canada, and Mexico before calling it a day. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Well, I want to congratulate you. You have a, an extraordinary career. Um, you know, you've gone platinum many times in Switzerland. You've gone, you know, gold and platinum here in the United States. You've done, I mean, you've lived, you know, a life of like a hundred men. So it's, it's amazing career that you have and everything. And I just wanted to congratulate you on that. And, um, um, 
Uh, Thank you very much. I do have a question for you on on your Spotify. So I, I noticed like um, there are certain albums on there that you no longer uh, or you don't have on there for, available for streaming. Um, is there a reason why you have like change of address and things like that not on there? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, <clears throat> the founding member of the band, Chris Von Rohr, is also the producer. And um, he's he's not too fond of that era where he was not in the band, you know, which uh, I can understand. But um, as far as it, them not being on Spotify and available for sale or even being pushed live or or, or so, it's uh, it's mainly because um, we want to concentrate on the songs uh, from the time when when Crocus was up and coming. Like when I first joined the debut album Metal Rendezvous, and the following albums, you know, Hardware, One Vice at a Time, Headhunter, and then skipping <coughs> that uh, glam era. <laughs> and uh, going to the um, pre-grunge era with Heart Attack. And then starting again with the reunion, which we had in 2008, um, where where we had uh, released uh, two more studio albums and the live uh, Adios Amigos, plus the... um, album which contains all the covers which were chosen from a collection of the band members you know so we just you know so that that's the reason why really and um well unfortunately for a, a couple of us in the band we'd like to to have performed a couple of those songs like my favorites to perform would have been midnight maniac and uh, <clears throat> maybe our love will never die. Absolutely. But you, know, <laughs> but, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And you have to compromise in life and look at the big picture and keep keep the boat, you know, don't rock the boat and keep sailing on. You know, that's that's my motto. motto. Yes. Absolutely. Um so I, I, I read where your, your guys' masters um, were burned down. Um, I saw like a New York Times article that said that you, your, your, I guess your uh, master tapes or something got damaged in, into like a fire or something like that. Oh, yeah? Where? Oh, I didn't hear of that. Yeah, I read you it. You mean Arist- uh, Arista, New York? Yeah, well, New York Times had an article that said uh, Universal, there was like a fire or something. Yeah. There was numerous bands that had like a lot of tapes and stuff like that destroyed. So I didn't know if you knew anything about oh. that. but Oh, shit, that's sad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> maybe I'll send, oh, I'll, I'll send yeah. you the link when we're done with this article. And maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's all hogwash. I don't know. <laughs> Let's hope it is. Okay. Yeah, thank, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Live and learn. <laughs> So, uh, hey, Mark, let's talk about the very begin- beginning for you. Um, what, 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 what got you into to rock and roll? What, what made you want to be a singer? And um, tell, us about, tell us about your journey before Crocus. Okay, well, I was born... <laughs> I was born a poor little girl. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I, I, I was born and grew up on a little island in the Mediterranean, um, right dead center and uh, of course we had a lot of uh, British influence because it was part of the British British Commonwealth and um, had a, a kind of similar upbringing you know English telephone boxes and <laughs> uh, eggs and chips and uh, steak and eggs and you know all that but it, my family was pretty musical. My my dad sang in a, in a in a church choir. He was uh, like a tenor, and my my mom played uh, classical piano. Then my eldest uh, sister played classical piano as well and gave lessons. And uh, 
we were all singers, you know, there's uh, six kids and two parents and we'd sometimes start singing, especially around the Christmas tree, you know. <laughs> right. And uh, from then on, I, I uh, joined the, the every choir, you know, the, the school choir, the church choir and so on. And and I got pulled out in front to, to sing for the class, you know, so then I started to become self-conscious about uh, my ability and um, you know I was praised so that encouraged me and from then on I joined the first band playing pop music you know Rolling Stones, Kinks, Animals, Yardbirds when I was 14 and that happened by accident because I you know I wanted really to, to play bass guitar and I I went to see this band just so I could pick up the bass and stuff. And one of those days, their singer was sick and they had a gig coming coming up on the weekend and they asked me to sit in because they knew I could sing a lot of songs. And uh, that's how it started. And after that, that first time, they said, they said to me, well, you know, we'd like to keep you. And so... Uh, that's how the ball started rolling and I was still at school and then I started to uh, you know not really I, was, I wasn't into studying anymore I was more into learning songs and mm. doing gigs and mm. you know so I I was walking on, on with one leg on one road and one leg on the other and <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. so then I had to decide what to do you know and and uh, so then I decided I was going to leave the island and and try and become a professional singer. And I went to London, and uh, the rest is history. Wow. So you joined a band called T, and you guys actually got to open up for Queen with that yeah. band, right? Queen? <laughs> yeah. Wow, what a yeah, thrill that yeah. must have been. That's so cool. That was, I, I, I watched every sound check, I, I can tell you. <laughs> I was so... Ama we were oh, all so amazed oh. watching these guys and they were the up and coming things fresh from London and we toured Germany with them, it was about 10 gigs and uh, we were all amazed, you know, I sat through every sound check and checked the guys out and tried to uh, well, we were inspired by them, really, you know Yeah, wow there was a few things that actually, you know, some really neat things that uh, happened for you. One was when you're in the band Easy Money, you guys uh, were going to oh. be you guys were going to be signed uh, with a different uh, record company, and, and instead of yeah, yeah. and then you're also were going to be, maybe go on tour with uh, Genesis with that band. Am, am I correct on that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. Um we we had a couple of good contacts through our management at that time and through uh today it's called rocket cargo in those days it was called magic shipping mm. you know and uh, our manager was he owned magic shipping and then they uh fused together with rocket cargo and you know uh god rest his soul <laughs> yeah that was uh, alan Eskom. And anyway, we came very close to all this, and then I let it go, you know. I just let it go because um, in the meantime, I auditioned for the lead vocal job with Rainbow. Wow. And thanks to that, got to got to jam with, you know, my idols, Richie Blackmore, Roger Glover, you know. Wow. Yeah. And uh, Co Cozy Powell. Wow. And... Uh, amazing and Don Airy on keyboards and wow. that didn't work out and um, right after that I was called up by Crocus because uh, they knew me through my through, through the time I had spent in Switzerland with T mm -hmm. and they knew uh, kind of this is the, the voice they're looking for you know because they wanted to go hard rock they were they were doing the first three albums of Crocus were more progressive rock influenced, you know, hippie stuff. <laughs> right. And um, and um, well, they asked me to join, and and I thought, yeah, no, of 
fly over for for the weekend and um I missed not being in Switzerland anyway um so then then it it happened we had a great weekend it clicked the the chemistry was right and I left easy money you know mm-hmm. with with all this uh, because I, I I felt I, I was closer to my roots with crocus, you know. Yeah. Mm. And I thought, and I thought, well, with crocus, um, I think we're gonna last definitely gonna last ten years, mm. and and that was forty years ago. Right. <laughs> wow. Now, um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So when you joined uh, when you joined ACD, oh, I'm sorry, when you joined Crocus, was was it after Crocus <laughs> is when ACDC. Uh, <laughs> The Bon Scott thing and, and uh, oh no, that, that was right at the beginning of Crocus. Now you you have to imagine you have to go back in time. It's like step into the the time machine and zoom back all the way there. And they, Crocus was at the beginning, and we released Metal Rendezvous, my debut with the band, and this shot straight to top of the charts in Switzerland and. And it ricocheted all over Europe and ended up in, in New York, in the USA. We heard from, from the USA as well. So people were interested all over the place. Mm. And I had invested so much time in tea and invested so much time, energy, you know, the blood, sweat and tears of trying to make it in, in London. You know. So I, here I was with, with a, a brand new chance, you know, um, a debut album that's that's making big sparks everywhere, and um, <clears throat> with these guys coming down from Birmingham, from the same production company as ACDC, you know, um, Light and Sound from Birmingham. Yeah. And um, the CEO of that company came came down as well because he had to show us how the light the light show matrix works. I've never seen one in my life, you know, <laughs> a matrix. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, and then he took me on the side and said, you know, we had, there's auditions happening for ACDC. Are you interested? I can get you in there. I said, I said Steve, are you crazy? You know, I'm sitting, I'm sitting tight on a, on a saddle riding a high horse yeah. right now. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm in heaven and we're going places and this horse is going to grow wings and it's going to call <laughs> it <right>. Pegasus <laughs> and we're going to go way up. You know, that's, hey, I mean, if you don't dream, you don't get anywhere in right. life, you know, and I, I was, I was, I was always a bit of a dreamer and, <laughs> but you know, this, I had facts to back, to back it up, right. you know, I was like, you know, so, um, so, so no regrets, you know, I can't look back and say, oh, I should have, you know, done, done that audition. I mean, some, you know, plus, you know, I, I didn't really want to fill someone's shoes and, and, you know, and, um, when when I had a brand new pair of shoes of mine to wear, you know what I mean. <laughs> well, sure. they they hadn't yes. quite they hadn't quite blown up to like they were going to blow up yet either, you know. Oh, they were bigger than Crocus, of right. course. Right, but then it took but, till you know but, they, Back in Black really kind of blew them up. But you know, as a as a big Bon Scott fan, yeah. you would have been a great replacement. I never even knew that story until um, I did some research on you, and you would have been a great replacement. I mean, you look kind of look like yeah, them, and, but it's, but it's yeah, but it's okay to to wind the film backwards and say it would have been, you right, know. Sure. But when you're there, right on the spot, you don't know what the future sure. is. That's I mean, right. Uh, and you, this this guy uh, overdosed on alcohol. I thought maybe the whole band is alcoholic. Sure. And, you know what I mean. <laughs> sure. That's funny. And they're all going to overdose on me or whatever. <laughs> uh, you know, there's there's all these thoughts that that run through your brain in in a split second sure. and then you take a decision and i said no i'm feeling secure here and i'm i'm in europe i'm not, i don't have to go to australia or whatever mm. <laughs> you know all right. these these little little things go through your mind they zap through like right. you know laser yes. <laughs> laser fast well you I said, no no i'm i'm staying put you know yes <laughs> well you you eventually made you know Hard hardware and and um, 
uh, one vice at a time and you made some really cool yeah. cool albums and you know i understand that a lot of people yeah. you know were giving you that uh acdc uh resemblance thing and all that uh and and, yeah. and to a oh, point yeah, i see that too to a point i understand it but i really i listen to your music and when i listen to you i i, I knew mark Storacci and 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 I know probably a lot of people back then called you Mark Storse, especially those in America, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no problem with that, you know. And <laughs> in France, it's in France they say Storas. In in Italy, Storace. In in America, st- <laughs> Storace or so Storacci, Liberace. Versus, you know, <laughs> hey, so it, the, it's that, that same. That, at yeah, least they so know who you are. They mean me. I, who cares? Right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> right. They know who you are. Yes. Yes. Well. Um, yeah. But I. I want to say that after those albums, and then, you know, we, let's go ahead and get right into to your your platinum selling album. You know, Headhunter. Yeah. And, and to me, yeah. your voice. You know, you have some pr- great producers going on here. Um, yeah. And and. What an incredible album! But I, I, your voice at that point changed. It's you know, it's like you, you really became your own on Headhunter as a vocalist, and, and you really started owning yeah. owning everything. I know you started, you know, you're doing writing more now. You're contributing, you know, musically, lyrically on the albums, and and your voice just kind of yep. became Mark Storacci. You, you know, it was no longer. To me, comparison to Bon Scott, and to me, you, you know, if anything, you were like a mixture of Brian Johnson and Bon Scott. That's my opinion, but um, I think you really, uh, you yeah. Know, by, go ahead. But by, by, by the time I did Headhunter, I had uh, total control and and total freedom of of uh, creative freedom of uh, the the vocal melodies and stuff, and I could take. Take the melodies where where my voice would allow me to go, and I just I just did whatever I I could possibly do because I thought I'm a, if I can do this now, maybe next year I'm I'm am a year older, and you know time is important for for a voice. You know, yeah. vocal yes. vocal cords change, especially with misuse. <laughs> right and. And you know, so so there I was at the zenith of my high notes, I would say, and and I I could deal with them like an acrobat, you know, it was like acrobatics mm. for me. Yes, which is which I'm no longer there mm-hmm. today. I don't want to I, I don't want to be there anymore. And so <laughs> today I'm not into the a voice that's too high. And I'm more into the raunchy mid mid range. I feel more comfortable and I enjoy it more. But I still zap up there quickly and do something, you know, <laughs> uh, up in the stars and back down again. But 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 back then for for Headhunter, I I was in the, oh, it was like wow. <laughs> I, I can't believe it when I listen back today mm-hmm. myself and say, well, there's, there you are, still young and, and dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I, I, turned, I turned Jana on to uh, Crocus a few years ago, and she really likes the, uh, the song, of course, you know, your, your major mega hit, Screaming in the Night. Yes. Uh, you know, you have a question for him about that, Jana? I, I do. We, we Like Scott said, we did some research on you, and, and we know that you shot that video uh, in San Francisco. I'm wondering if you can tell us some of your memories from that video shoot. It was, it was hot and sunny, and uh, we spent two days in, in the sun. We were using up so much suntan lotion, actually, <laughs> sunscreen. You know, so so we don't burn up because we. Because <laughs> you're European. That's the part where I, I, I was only wearing a loincloth, oh. and, and it, my skin really hurt after that shoot. Oh. <laughs> wow. But but the the whole thing the whole thing was a, a, a new adventure. You know, it was it was like a little bit of Hollywood in there. <laughs> yeah. And and we'd never done a, a video. Uh, to that extent, which goes so deep mm. and so three-dimensional, you know, usually you put a band on a stage and they mime to the, to, right. to the song and that's it. 
you know, yeah. which is pretty boring. But, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, but uh, doing acting and, and stuff like that, you know, playing playing a part of of this guy, you know, I went through the story and especially the, the last bit, you know, when I jump up on the, on, on the table and walk all over the plates in my Nikes and, <laughs> and, 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 and see my, my loved one who was killed during the, the video up there on the TV screen reading the news. It's just like, hmm. you know, I, I really got into that acting part, you right. know, and, and I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed that. Sure. <laughs> Sure. I want to ask you about um, some of the bands that you toured with early on, um, and maybe you can give me just a, a couple of memories of, of each of these tours. Um, I want to start with the nineteen yeah. the nineteen eighty Reading Rock Festival. You played with Iron Maiden and Def Leppard, White Snake, um, UFO, and <laughs> Slade. What do you remember about yeah. that show? Amazing, amazing! It was poor metal mayhem. It was backstage confusion and 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 <laughs> and boy what what a it was a sea of of metal heads out there and and we just gave it all we had we had a we we had so much energy cuz this was right after uh, the USA we we flew back to Europe and, we, and then we did reading so so we were all um like psyched up, you know. Yeah. And Tommy was still alive there, so when I when I see pictures, it, it brings back memories of, you know, he, he was a great guitar player, but didn't unfortunately didn't have it together with the daily reality, you know, sure. drugs and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But. Um, yeah, that that was a great experience, and we didn't know what was going to happen till we started playing, because the band before us, they were buried in in beer cans, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> now was it, was was that a sign? Was, was that a sign of displeasure, or was that a sign of? Uh... Yeah. The, the, Definitely this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, let's go to ni so let's go to the 1980. You toured with ACDC. What are your memories of that tour? Well, I I remember that was short and sweet. You know, uh, actually too short because the the ACDC audience was was really great and they 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 lapped it up when we, when we came on stage and, and and was great for us and we thought wow, yeah, but. Um, it didn't. It didn't go on too long. We thought they were gonna. They were gonna, gonna ask us to uh, carry on and uh, you know do another round with them, but uh, nothing like that happened. You know. I guess I don't know. Huh. I, I don't know what what was behind it, but um, it was good while it lasted. Right. And it says you also played with. The, let's see. Ted Nugent, Blackfoot, Rainbow, Judas Priest, Cheap Trick, Saxon, Motorhead, and Rush. Um, also, you did you did a tour with Kiss on the Animalize tour. How was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 didn't have any, uh, their costumes on, the, so they were you could really see who who they were. You know, right, human uh -huh. beings instead of monsters. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they were really really nice guys. You know, we'd have breakfast together sometimes, and or a coffee in between, whatever. And uh, we enjoyed that tour. We were treated well, and you know, it was it was nice being with with those guys. I mean, there were no restrictions backstage. We we could walk into their dressing room, then oh, come wow. into ours and chat. And, you know, mm. it was it was nice. You know, same yeah. thing with Sammy Hagar or Judas Priest. You know, yeah really nice when it when it's like that you yes, know definitely. so Def Leppard was your one of your your biggest tours I think you know when you guys came out Pyromania and, and you went on yeah, the Pyromania yeah. tour and they were just blowing the hell up oh yeah and you guys were going all over the place, and there's actually a, a video that was uh, recorded in Arkansas, and actually the person uh, who sent me that is in the chat room right now listening to the interview, but sent me a um, okay. some backstage footage in Arkansas. I want to say it's Little Rock, um, but you guys like uh, 
put the promoter's car on uh, center blocks. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you know the Def Leppard guys were in their shorts and stuff, and you guys were backstage, and you know you had a you had like a tour bus there with the, like a you had a shuttle, uh, like a, a painting of a shuttle on the back of it, and the front of it said Headhunter. But you had the, the oh yeah, you had the guy's <laughs> car like up on center blocks, I guess. So so he you guys were like you know <laughs> pranksters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, I mean, all kinds of pranks, you know. He, Stuff like that uh, kind of uh, distracted from the monotony of, of right. all the work sure. until showtime, you know, where it, whether it was uh, like the, the crew, road crews used to organize or maybe someone else, tour manager, organize a stripper <laughs> to <laughs> come and entertain the crew. I mean, after a whole morning of setting up the stuff and, and maybe... Uh, I don't know, things like this happened, and it was all harmless, you know, sure. harmless fun. That, that's that's the main thing, right? You know, I think as mu- <laughs> I think as musicians that we all get that too. We we understand the monotony, and and I mean, when we were younger, we did some pretty uh, silly stuff too. So yes. let me let me ask you real quick: out of all <laughs> out of all those bands that you played with when you guys were a young band, was there one of those bands that took you under your you know under their wing and kind of showed you the ropes how the big boys did it? You know, like. Perhaps. What do you mean? Sorry. Oh, uh, you know, like when you guys first started uh, rising as Crocus, did was there any band that took you under their wing and showed you the ropes and you know, kind of, kind of wised you up to the business? Well, no, not much. I, mm. I, we it was learning by doing, I must say. Yeah. Um, over here, over here, you know, in, in Switzerland, I mean, the guys. We, you know, you look at a band with with four eyes and eight ears. <laughs> you know, when you go to a concert, you're so hyper and seeing things which, whereas the normal crowd, the normal fans look at the band in a different way. They're just consuming. You are consuming and analyzing and, and, um, and you have this big wish to be to reach that, to be be the same. So you analyze, then you read things, you know, some stuff you find in, in magazines in those days or in interviews, and and you learn and learn, and and then you go on the road and you start doing, mm. trying to do what you learned, and bit by bit, year after year, you know, you fall, you fall on your face a hundred times. <laughs> and yeah. If yeah. you... You know, and you, and you stand up and 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 walk on. You know, and you fight on and fight on, and yes. that's basically what got us to the point that we got. You know, and I know we could have reached another level. You know, the level which which we didn't reach really. You know, the really big big time. I mean, where Def Leppard, Iron Maiden, where those guys are. You know. But um, there was too much intrigue uh, in the band around the whole organization of Crocus. That's the dark side of the moon of mm. Crocus, you know. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I really don't like to get into that because um, we're, we're different people today, and we never never got on so well as we did since the reunion of 2008 Mm -hmm. and there are different influences uh, the people around us you know as well very positive and um you know kind of okay let's do it you know (laughs) yeah so i want to ask you one more question when we get to to some of the people in the chat room that have some couple of questions for you but i wanted to ask i want to ask you about um D. Snyder and Twist's sister. I know you guys kind of had some issues in the past, um, a long a while back. And, Only and, one. Yeah, and I know I know he's been posting on you know his Twitter, you know, kind of talking some stuff, and you know said something about maybe getting you guys thrown off a festival or something like that. Have you guys buried the hatchet yeah. with D. Snyder? Have you buried the hatchet? Um, well, I never. We never had a hatchet. Right. He he's the one who created the the hatchet because all it was was uh, we just didn't like 
we didn't like the stage clothes that, that his wife uh, did for us, and we didn't want to buy them. Right. That's all. Right. You yes. know, I mean, human rights. <laughs> That's yeah. right. You know? That's right. I, and I'm, I'm not paying for something I didn't buy. Yeah. You know, and then it, it, it got into an argument, and I think our tour manager took threw threw them into a bin and burned them. You know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's, that's rock and roll, you yeah. know, and 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 um, you you live and move forward, and you forget. And I was, but what happened a few years ago? I was supposed to do Wacken with D. Snyder on the same bill, uh-huh. and he and he said he wouldn't. And this was me solo, you know, uh, as uh, together with um, um, rock meets classic. You know, you have a whole orchestra and a rock band and these guest singers, you know. And I was on the list, and Dee was invited as headliner, and he said, I'll only do it if you kick Storacci out, out of the wow. show. Wow. Jeez, you terrible. Know. What a dickhead. So, so, so these guys were put on the spot because, you know, um, we I've done it before. This, this would have been... A, third time uh, that, that I work with, with that organization, you know, and they say, oh, we're so sorry, Mark, I mean, we, but it's up to you, you know, he said he won't do it, if it's up to you, and I said, look, I'm, I'm stepping down, yeah. because uh, this is good, is good for you guys, and another time, you know, yeah. and, but I, I was ready before I heard th- all about this, because I knew we were going to be on the same bill. I was ready to go up to D and say, "Hey, man, let's come on, let's shake sure, it and sure. drink mm-hmm. drink a beer." Life come is on, too cool short. Down. Right? Yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, yes, I got. Uh, I've done this with so many people, and the last was Joe Elliott of uh, Def Leppard mm. in 2019. One of the first festivals we played on our Adios Amigos tour was with Def Leppard and I insisted you know I told Phil Collin I I have to speak with Joe and I want to apologize for some shit that happened negative shit between the bands uh, back in 1983 on the Pyromania tour Mm. you know Mm. and and Joe went Whoa, I'd forgotten all about that. That's about <laughs> fucking 35 years right, ago, right? right. Wow. You know, it's like, I said, you know, but but uh, I'm going to sleep better uh, now that that uh, we've, we, sh- we shook hands and, mm. and, and gave each other a hug and we let that go by. It's water under the bridge. Right. You, know? you know, you get you get old, you get older, yeah. and you realize that letting things like that go make you a better man. Yes. So, I mean, just like Wasp. Yeah. You, when you toured with Wasp, you guys didn't get along with Wasp uh, very I think, well. I did think you? I read you hated Wasp. Did you guys not get along with Wasp? Boy, well, I I don't know what was going on in the background, but I know I know we we lived in the same apartment complex. Uh, of Blackie Lawless for a whole month while we were recording Change of Address in Los Angeles. And uh, I never met him once. And uh, that was a strange time uh, because we knew he was around the corner. But I, I, I don't remember anything negative with Wasp except that we didn't really like like uh, the music or their show. We, mm. we were on a different... Um, wavelength mm-hmm. you know let's yeah. say well, I, I love point. both of your bands. I think you guys are both, all of you guys in the 80s is just my thing. Uh, <laughs> Janet's going to ask you a couple of questions that are uh, from the chat room. Yep. Uh, we have a guy. Yeah. He's, a, he's a big fan of yours here. His name is Gary Wofford. He's actually at work right now, and today is his birthday. And he said, for my birthday, I'd like you to ask Mark a question. So his question for you is, he, I, he saw your 1982 tour with 38 Special yeah. and, and Iron Maiden. And he wanted to know what was it like for you guys playing to a crowd who at that point maybe didn't realize what an amazing band th- they were watching and how big you guys were going to become. What what are some of your memories from, from that tour? Uh, 
38 special was was like uh, southern yes yes yeah, that, yeah. and and it, it it was a strange mixture you know yeah. i didn't think we really we really fit well together right because iron maiden is 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 far it's the most metallic you can get the, okay um they don't sound like metallica but it's a different kind, but it's still, you know, all guitars and yes. uh, it's stuff that, that uh, and Crocus was more like uh, boogie blues rock, you know, um, blue, yeah. hard rock. But so it was it was a strange combination. And it's like in the very beginning, we even pr- played with Pat Travers and a couple of other bands that we we felt we didn't really fit with you know but you have to go through those slots and mm-hmm. and accept them and and live to fight another day and hope they get you further every little step higher that you can get you know gets gets you you more experience you meet more fans and more fans see you and you know that's the only way to do it. You know by touring, touring, touring. We were we were burning so much rubber on the road. It was amazing. And with that, I don't mean condoms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you had plenty of plenty of uh, wild parties back in the day with oh, a lot yeah. with a lot of women all over you guys. Yeah. I'm sure we do have another viewer. Yeah. Uh, we have another viewer or viewer question for you. Uh, her name is Andrea Janet. She wants to know the craziest thing that ever happened on the road. I'm sure you have many things to choose from there. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, but I'm not going to talk about ah. it over, ah. over the radio. Sure. Right, right. <laughs> I'll just t- I'm, I'm not that extroverted, I you know. I understand. I understand. Um, but, you know, yeah, but, you know, shit happened. and uh, <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I, got, I got left off the bus a couple of times <laughs> during my lifetime, you know, it's like the bus drives off and and I'm there. Luckily, <laughs> luckily <laughs> with my wallet, you know. Wow. So, hopefully, hopefully your under- <laughs> underwear too. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, it was usually, you know, because I spent too long on the toilet, you know, <laughs> and uh, and 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 it's it it used the dangerous time to happen is that when you step off the bus in the middle of the night and everyone else is asleep in the bunks and the driver goes off to to buy something and and like one of those times was I I wanted to go to the loo and I thought the driver was going to fill up the tank which usually takes about <laughs> 15 minutes you know right. minimum right so, so I didn't hurry and when I came out, he he'd only gone in to buy something. Oh. I don't know, chewing gum, <laughs> and and back and back to the bus, and and off he drove. Ah, yeah. oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And we've had tragedies as well, or close to tragedies. Mm. It was very bad for the bus driver. Uh, we were on the Hellraiser tour in Scandinavia. And we came to the same strip where the, the the accident happened with the first bass player of Metallica oh, wow. oh, yeah. got oh, killed. Gosh. On, wow. on the same on the same strip that was the road was frozen and there was this huge truck going by um with uh, full of metal, you know, these metal girders or, yes. or whatever. And uh, we we came into a slide. I was asleep in the bunk at this time, but wow. you know, the, our bus came in into a slide and hit the big truck oh. uh, on the left left hand side corner of of the front, which which jammed the drivers. He he was lucky. He 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 could keep his leg. Wow. You know? oh. Uh, yeah, and and he was jammed in there, couldn't even get up, screaming, you know. Wow. And and we can, we we slid to the right side then, and hit the planks, you know, the side, mm-hmm. uh, the the, bar- the barriers, and these barriers, of course, blocked our, you know, blocked the doors, mm-hmm. both doors, 
So mm-hmm. we couldn't get out. And oh. luckily the bus was not on fire. Mm. <laughs> oh, gosh. Because by the, t- by the time the, the fire uh, brigade came and the ambulance, um, we would have roasted. We would have roasted, you know. Wow! And and they 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 came in and smashed the glass and and put blankets over the the, the pieces and and mm. put up ladders and we came out the back window, and they had to uh, really dig the driver out, you know. And he went straight to hospital. Luckily, he they they didn't need to amputate his left leg. You know? So wow. it came out well. It came out well. My Things goodness. can always be worse. You know? uh, well, yeah, the, the Cliff Burton incident, right? Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Goodness So sakes. let's let's talk a little bit about The Blitz, which is one of my favorite albums. Yep. Um, I really thought... Oh, great. I thought, the, you know, I know I know you personally aren't a fan of that album. I loved it. And, well, and, no, uh, no, not, not everything. Not everything. I'm, I, it's more the production of the blitz and change of address that that I feel don't fit to the to what we wanted you know we yeah. we didn't want to polish everything up so mm. so fine you know what do you think about working with those producers bob rock and um who was it uh, fairbairn. fairbairn bruce yeah i mean yeah who would have thought that that later on uh, fairbairn would would uh, work with ACDC on the live album and Bob Rock would become the producer of Metallica, you know, because when they worked with us, we were uh, trying to, they were trying to make us sound like Loverboy, you know? Ooh. Right, right. <laughs> you know, turn me loose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they turned you loose, didn't they? Keyboards. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, it, the whole scene was strange at that time, you know. There was Motley Crue coming up uh, with all the fancy dress, and and uh, it seemed like, you know, we were told if you want to get into Cream magazine and all hit Parader and, yeah. and get your get your faces on those magazines, which which the fans buy, then well, which is important for you, you, you guys, you know, this all the kind of advice that we were getting from from the record company and people around us, you know, they wanted to commercialize uh, an animal, you know, because right. <laughs> yeah. right. we were like, we were like a beast during the headhunter <laughs> days, you know, sure. on the road with on the road with Def Leppard, you know, yeah. and. Um, Okay, maybe adding a, a a bit of backing vocals would have would have worked, and you know, uh, <clears throat> but but it was only it wasn't just polishing the music; it was also polishing the look. You right. know, yeah, right, right. yeah. You guys got to get the girls. You know, <laughs> right, right. Sure. You know. What's your favorite track on that <laughs> and, album? Well, Midnight Maniac. <laughs> yeah, I go. love that song. <laughs> You know, for, for yeah, yeah. Mark, um, I play in a band that's been together 12 years, and we've been playing Screaming in the Night for the entire time we've been together. And it's so funny. You know, when we don't put it in the set list, people ask for it constantly. Yeah. And um, it's such a great song really? to play. Oh, I love playing that song live, yeah. And I don't know if, and I, as a matter of fact, when I get done with this show, I'm going to drive for about an hour and a half to go play a show tonight. I don't know if it's on the set list or not, but I can guarantee you if it's not, there'll be somebody asking for it. So <laughs> you know that you left your mark, oh, cool. you, you left your mark in mid-America yes, um, with, a, with a song like that. It's always a great song to play, and I look forward to playing it tonight. I don't know, like I say, I don't know if we will, but... Um, um, how does that? What do I you? I love I love singing that song still. Nice. Yeah, it's a great song. It's it's, it's beautiful and it's so it's well. A, it's it's a ballad, but yes. but it's still raunchy, you know. Definitely. It's just got you a know. great mood to it. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Did yeah. you did you yeah. get along with Tom Worman on when you guys went into change of address? I know you guys went. No. You guys, <laughs> no. You guys didn't get along. <laughs> no, and he and he knew it too. You know. I, I, I didn't hide my feelings, you know, and uh, and then he said, you know, well, give me one chance for the single. So when we do schools out, you know, mm-hmm. um, when, when we, we covered Alice Cooper's schools out, he said, 
uh, give me a chat. Can I work with you on that one? <laughs> mm. yeah, you know, and yeah, it it came out well, I thought, yeah. you know, in the end. But um, the rest of the production was a little bit too, um, I don't know, funky mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> for for a hard rock sure. band, you know. Although although that material, I know, you know, if 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 one, I can perceive that somebody could, out of those song ideas, you know, make good hard rock songs out of them, you know. Right. Don't you? Do you have so some demos of those? Maybe, sorry. Do you have some older demos that were like a little edgier, a little harder? Uh, yeah. Well, unfortunately, I don't have a copy, but but uh, our studio where we did our demos in Solothurn um, <clears throat> there's this guy Jörg Nagali I'm sure he has demos somewhere and mm. and they sounded just you know plug in and record you know mm-hmm. so it's, it just sounded direct from the amp and there was nothing polished and and the drums sounded like <clears throat> you know normal hard rock tr- uh, drums and yeah, but unfortunately, everything was, uh, yeah, a little bit dislodged. <laughs> right, right. Hey, uh, Marco, I want to switch subjects a little bit. We have someone in here asking, yeah. do you guys enjo- enjoy doing the Monsters of Rock cruise a lot? Do you have a lot of fun on those? Oh, love it, love it. Nice. We all love that. That's great. And uh, unfortunately, for health reasons, uh, we couldn't, uh, Fernando couldn't join us, you know. But uh, last year, was it last year? Wait, Corona. Yeah. Um, two, 2020, yeah, February, the last one, um, we had Mark Kohler with us because Mark and Fernando didn't join us in 2015, I think the last one right. was. Uh, uh, I'm not good with dates, but... Um, yeah, luckily Mark could join us, and Flavio is a new drummer since 2012, 13, and uh, part of the band family. Uh, you know, it's, it, we really enjoyed it because it's it's so intense. You're like 24, 24 hours on the same boat with mm. everyone else, and. Uh, you know the exchange of conversation and good vibes. Everyone's so happy with the music, including including ourselves. I mean, the first thing you do every day is check the list to see and mark down where you which bands you want to see. Otherwise, you get so confused, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. And and you have to plan when, what time you're gonna eat, what time, <laughs> you know, sure. which bands you're gonna see and. You get, you get, uh, you meet people. You start talking, and then suddenly, oh shit, I gotta go. That band's <laughs> coming on now. You but know, you know, after, after years <laughs> of playing clubs and arenas, playing on a cruise has got to be something kind of refreshing, kind of cool. You know, something different. I th- yeah, it is. It is. It's like a club, really. <laughs> did, um, did, did you do ACDC uh, at a karaoke bar there on the ship? <laughs> Yeah, I did it a, a couple of times. I went up there and I thought, well, I might as well sing something while I'm drinking and, and talking. Ah, with, yeah. With the, because just, just, just to, you know, help the spirit of the place, liven it up a bit and give something for free, you know. Right. <laughs> right. And, 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 and also, you know, it, 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 it's funny, you know, I, I chose AT, ACDC songs on purpose because so many fans... <laughs> write to me and say, you know, why don't you do a cover album or, or I'd like to hear you sing Back in Black or something, you know, mm. although Back in Black is for me taboo, you know, it's yeah. out of my reach, I'll be honest, you know, mm. Brian Johnson's voice is in fucking incredible. Yeah. He is like a chainsaw. Mm-hmm. He's, he's up there hitting the highest notes and that yeah. would kill my my vocal cords, <laughs> so I don't even I don't even attempt to. Although I did have I did do Thunderstruck f- with the orchestra I was talking about wow. before, um, where you know, 
um, rock meets classic, and I really had to to uh, practice and and uh, make sure I don't bust my vocal cords doing sure. thunderstruck. You know, sometimes <laughs> so, right. You know, holy moly! Sometimes it's, I, I it's right up there. I joke sometimes that <laughs> these some of these '80s singers that they knew they were going to reunite 35 years later, they might have taken it a little easier back in the '80s <laughs> and sang it a little easier so they could still sing it 35 years yeah. later. Right. Yeah, I'm one of them. Ah, <laughs> uh, you have a great voice. Yeah, your voice is killer. I'm sure you, you still have a great voice. And and uh, do you, are are your plans to to re- continue uh, with your Audios Amigos tour when you come into America? Are you going to come to America? There was a question in the chat room about love this. to love to we'd we'd all love to, but let's see what happens. You know, it's dragging on over here, especially mm-hmm. in Switzerland. <clears throat> you know the numbers, COVID numbers. Uh, have been rising, but at the same time, the number of vaccinations have have been rising too. So it might balance it out. So we have herd immunity in in say in a couple of months' time. I hope. Um, I got my first jab, <clears throat> and I'm looking for the first one on the 13th. Mm. You know, and my wife is going to drive me there because she said you and I fall over my shoelace right (laughs) you know we we look forward to you coming to america too and i it was just random i looked up i said i wonder how many times they've come to tulsa so i don't know if you remember you were here six years ago on the long stick goes boom tour at a place called the vanguard and then you were vanguard i remember the name do you okay so then in september night you you played here september 19th 1984 on the blitz tour with sammy hagar and then you you were here june 16th of 1982 on the one vice at a time tour with maiden and 38 special which as you said i thought was a very odd matchup the the southern (laughs) rock wow so we're looking forward wow. to you to, uh, coming to Tulsa again, entertaining us. Definitely. Yeah. Hey, Mark, we're getting to the end of your interview. You've been very gracious with your time, and we thank you for giving us. Uh, Daughter. Yes. I, I, we have one other thing we want to ask you about before we cut you loose. Uh, we've seen some video okay. of you, we've seen some video of you singing with your beautiful daughter, and she has a fantastic voice oh, just Juliana, like you. Yeah. Tell us about that. Do you do the two of you get to sing together a lot? And how special is that for you? <clears throat> for me, it's very special. You know, I mean, I we we're lucky to have talented children. You know, mm-hmm. my my daughter sings, my son sings, but. Actually, he prefers playing drums, you know. Wow. And um, <clears throat> but but he hasn't been around to it uh, for for a while, you know. But but the thing with my daughter is, um, as soon as Corona started, I I had been doing karaoke, um, little karaoke videos with her, you know, just for fun at home. Mm. And when when the whole Corona thing started and we were in lockdown, I said, uh, "Let's do a couple and um, record them on, on on the handy, and then post them on on uh, you know YouTube and and Facebook and yeah. see what happens." And the reaction was great. Yes. And and then we were invited on two TV stations. And now she's joined me to to do some. I have this acoustical project, which we do uh, mm. private parties, and she comes along and sings wow. four to five songs and some a couple of them are duets with me. Mm. And um, yeah, I, I guess I'm looking forward to, uh, for her to uh, you know help her with with writing and um, getting something going for nice. her. In that's, the future. How old? How old is she, Mark? Uh, she's twenty six. Twenty six. Nice. She's beautiful. You should be very proud. Thank you. I am. I am. And even, even uh, of Luca, my son. Yes. Also, uh, he helps with we, me with all my IT stuff because I'm not that technical. <laughs> I'm an old, old school guy. You know, and uh, luckily he his job is tour support. You know, IT. Yeah. 
Right. And um, and I'm more like E.T. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, there's a lot of people. There, there's a lot of people in the chat room, and they're asking a lot of questions. And I hope after this interview, you can go in there and answer some of these questions for them. And um, you know, okay. hit, hit like them. They're, they all they all love you, and you know, all your fans are still out there, and you still have a very strong uh, fan base with Crocus. Yes. And um, you know, we're looking forward for you guys to get out there and start busting your ass and doing what you guys have done so so many years. Yes. I mean, yeah, well, so I'm, many I'm, records. I'm looking. Thank you. Yes. Mark, we will let you I'm go. I'm looking forward to to coming back to the USA because I, I always, um, my heart was, at one point I was thinking of, of moving over and, mm. and throwing my anchor there, you know. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, around around the blitz time it was and then uh, yeah we were back on tour and 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 things changed again you know and i ended up back here but uh, luckily i did because then i met cornelia and we brought juliana and luca into this world you know so <laughs> yes <laughs> that was worth worth living for that's and, so great and hopefully i can well, we i can come back and um I still have a very good friend in Denver, Peter Valti, the yes. guy you've been in contact with. Yes, yes. And he was my first manager. He was the manager of T mm. in oh, wow. Switzerland. That's okay. a so long friendship. He's been in Denver. Wow. Well, He's been in Denver. Yeah, that's very long. It's amazing. He's well, been in Denver a long time. Nice. Well, so, it was... It was you know, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. And... Um, you know, when, when Crocus is over, uh, what, one thing I didn't tell you yet, I, I've been writing songs, you know. I've been writing songs with uh, two, uh, with three guitar players, you know, Charlie, Adrian, and Cyril, and uh, this drummer, Massimo. And I've got a nice collection of songs, and uh, Good. so in the future, I'm I'm bound to record a CD and... And we'll see what happens, you know, and we can talk again yes. uh, when, it, when we get to that point. Absolutely. We would love to help you promote that. That's very exciting news. Yeah. Thank, thanks for sharing that and, with us. And I also want to, you know, say that I hope that you and Fernando, uh, you know, have a strong relationship still. And, uh, you know, everything's good with the band and, and you guys continue on and being good oh, yeah. friends and everything. So, you know, it was a pleasure. Oh, yeah, we... we we do. We uh, as I said, the band's never been so tight together because Good. what kept us together is is the music we we created together, all the experiences, all those good memories, you know. And and in the end, good wins over bad, and yes. it's the same yep. with experiences and memories. Yes, definitely. Good always conquers evil. Amen. And and we're here. Um, we behave like buddies. We are. Buddies, and you know, um, you know, I, I had tears. I, I couldn't stop my tears at at the last concert in the Hallenstadion in Zurich, which was the end of our European Adios Amigos tour. Mm. Because you know, I, I stood there like I don't know, like an idiot, tears running down, <laughs> <laughs> staring out at the cheering crowd, thinking, Aww. shit. This comes the last one. <laughs> you know? Oh man, it's so special! Well, it's it, amazing. It, 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 it's amazing. I, I don't understand. I mean, you guys gone triple platinum in Switzerland, so it's kind of hard to stop. You know, if you're, <laughs> if you're still selling records. Yes. But um, I want to thank you for coming on to the show. Like I said, I'm a, a big fan of yours, and I've I, you know from from a little young kid, you know, I I was buying and listening and rocking out to your albums. So I really appreciate all all the so memories. Nice. Yes. And uh, like you said, all the hit Thank Praters, you. the hit Prater magazines, I bought all that stuff. So <laughs> sure, Circus magazine oh, cool. and, and Cream. Yeah, thank you for the thank you for the music. Thank you. You sound like a a really nice guy, and we appreciate your time a yeah. lot. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you, Mark. Thank you. And, and and come on with us, you know, again with us soon, so we can help promote your new efforts. And we will let you go. I guess it's getting close to bedtime there in Switzerland. So we'll go ahead and cut you loose. But we certainly. Oh no, will. it's it's. Uh, it's nine o'clock oh, at you, night here. See, we, we go to I'm bed at nine. 
<laughs> joking. Uh, well, we, He's a midnight maniac. Okay, just remember. Okay, I got you. Okay, I got oh, you. Oh yeah, that's funny. Well, we, I I don't go to bed before one o'clock at night. Oh wow. uh, gosh. In the morning. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> because oh. because uh, I I was watching a movie before we started talking and and okay. it's really good and I'm gonna watch <laughs> You're gonna the rest of it. it. <laughs> well, go or out a glass of red. There you go. Candlelight. <laughs> Very my nice. wife is down there, Very and good. Uh, so I'll just join and chill out and nice. enjoy the, the, the night. Thank you, Mark. We, yeah. ap- we appreciate you. Have a great night, and we'll talk with you soon, okay? And, and one more thing. When my phone bill comes in, I'm going to send it to you. So you- <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to call you collect, though. <laughs> We're joking. Oh, no. Oh, so sorry. Oh, shit. We're no. good. Uh, We're fine. Thank you so much, Mark. Thanks, thank you Mark. so much. You're okay. awesome. Uh, we'll, we'll, go out, we'll go out and have dinner when I come to town. There you go. Or, or when we come to Switzerland. <laughs> yes, thank you. Adios. Yeah, okay, Adios. Adios, amigo. Hey, take care, guys. Bye, thank Mark. you, Mark. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank and, you. Um, rock on and you too. keep up the good work. Thank you, you. you do a great job, and I think it's gonna grow. Keep with the flow. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Friend. Thank you. Thank you. Have bye-bye. a great day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. There you go. Wow, that was awesome. Oh my God, <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> what a nice sweetheart of a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Holy and poor Moses. Jan. I was like, come on, Jan. You just ask more no. questions. You were just kind of no, letting no, me, no. me and Nine have because it all because. Be- okay, what did we talk about? We're going to let him fanboy this one. No, he, but he did great. <laughs> Scott, really, seriously, props to you yeah, for yeah. all the all the homework you, you did. Know, if you, it wasn't for all this extra stuff I had written down, okay. I, saw that. I don't know, I if, saw we, I don't know that. if we were going to have a full hour show with hey, the stuff that we did have. That was just great. Are we and, still on? We oh, are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. See? Oh, hey. Yeah, Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah. And we so. need to like uh, mention all of our sponsors for all this. Sure. And, and yes, we do. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> idea. Get we're, we're still in disbelief. Oh, these big interviews are just such a thrill. Not that the local ones aren't, because we love you guys and you know we're behind you. But when you when you <laughs> land the singer of the biggest rock band in Switzerland, you kind of celebrate that one. And that guy was such a sweetheart. Mark, thank you for being so kind and generous today. Yeah, it was. It was. That was. I mean, oh. I no, just uh, what he was telling us was interesting, but yes. they have the accent to go with oh, it, and, the, great. and it's right here in your ears. It's and you so, just, it was, I could just sit and listen I to him. It. I yeah, love it was it. killer. Love it. So, yes, shout out to our sponsors, gregshipman.com. We're still on Cloud Nine about that pilot episode. If you guys missed it, you can catch the replay on our Facebook page or on YouTube. So, that's exciting. And uh, we also want to thank. DEB Concerts, they are rocking and rolling once again. Make sure you visit their show schedule. We got some cool stuff coming up. Uh, Doug Burgess is is back in full motion with those shows. Also, thank you to Identity Merch. We got a ton of t-shirt orders this week, guys. Thank you. Uh, when you do that, we can buy more gear. If our cords go out, you guys are helping us fund that. So thank you. We also want to plug the next show. The next one's going to be a blast, too. And that's on Sunday, May 16th. You got Rick Fox coming in, and yeah. he and you are like best friends now. No, we're not best <laughs> friends, but Rick Fox, yeah, he's the bass player for Steeler, and he's he played in Wasp, and he's got a great and cool history, yeah. and it's going to be fun to talk to him. And we're going to be talking to Jamin O'Connell, local legend from uh, The Machine. He's been in a lot of bands around here. The Machine is his latest effort. We're also going to do a quick check-in with Dusty Robinson of Dirty Rotten, and he sent us a cool new song that's got Melissa Fox on it with him as well. So lots of good stuff coming up, man. We're uh, we're rocking and rolling. We're back in full force. This was amazing. I that was so enjoyable. And yeah, it was it was a good time. Yeah, and I want to thank everybody for coming in the chat room. I know it's a Saturday at one p.m. or you know now too, but um, thank you guys for coming in the chat yes. room. And there was a lot of people from uh, that are big Mark Starachi fans and Crocus yes. fans that came in. There was a few of them, and I appreciate you guys coming in and giving us come the, back, come back yeah, anytime. Yeah, uh, f- friend and f- um, you know, follow oh. us on um, Tulsa Music Stream, our uh, Facebook page, and, and the we, group page. We have too. a group now, yeah. so come on in there, and uh, we might start a band called Tulsa Music Stream with us too. And definitely, <laughs> definitely looking forward to the Rick Fox one. Although I tried to search for him on Facebook, and I, I, I spelled R I C K. Don't, and do, nothing, that. don't nothing, do that. Oh, don't do that. That's, nothing that's, came up. That's I was the like, problem. Oh, that's the go. problem. Had to go R I K. R I K. We want to wish you a safe uh, trip up to Asylum tonight. Dead Thank Metal you. Society is at Cherokee Casino West Asylum tonight. Yeah, go see us band play absolutely thanks drive, a lot drive safe. thank you guys for tuning in Bye. thanks for sharing it um 
we 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 have better things and bigger things coming. So. America woman. Whoa! All right. You, wow. You peaked out the meter on that one. Uh, I had to okay. do that for Mark. Uh, that was pretty good. I, I didn't have to ask him the cover story, but he kind of was like talking about the covers. Th- but there was a that's okay. You know, I was going to ask him about all of his covers. No. And I mean, you know, there was a lot to talk about yeah, there. You so. did great. Yeah. That, that was yeah. fantastic. Props to Scott. Scott got that interview for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And, and uh, props Homework. to you, buddy. Yeah. Homework. I want to move to Switzerland now. I, I think we're just going to visit first and see <laughs> if we can find a place. <laughs> Test the waters. See what it looks like there. I heard it's really, I'm, I mean, it's hard to find pretty areas there. So. Yeah, sounds like it's cold right now, too. And, and rainy, too. Yeah. And But we can go and watch movies with Mark sometime if we ever make it over there. Now, I'm going to hold him to that. I bet day. he has a VCR. If he does come over here, we're going to dinner. So I'm going to yes, hold him to are. that. Yes, we are. We you hear that, Mark Strachey? We're taking you to dinner, dude. Take him out to maybe to the hibachi place. I keep talking. I keep <laughs> and then by uh, and then by the house. The right. uh, we'll bring him up here. Right. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to cut you all loose too. Have a great Saturday. Thank you. If you're going out of town, go see them. I know Dress to Kill is playing out of town tonight as well. We've got lots of local music in town. Support local music. Support regional music. Support music because it's a lot of fun. You guys are screwing up. The no, camera. that was a wait a minute. That was a new. T- we kind of added some new twist to the show now. <laughs> David Letterman. We crumble it up at the I end. I don't and we like throw that it. call. The thing is, you try to make it to the hoop and you get three points. What you did is you knocked it out of focus. We're we're okay. Anyway, oh. anyway. I just looked that way anyway, out of focus. <laughs> don't we all? <laughs> all right, we're gonna go. We'll see you back here Sunday, May sixteenth, for our next episode. Rick Fox, Jamin O'Connell, Dusty Robinson. Love you much. Have a great Saturday, Tulsa Music Stream. If you missed all of this, catch the replay. It'll be available momentarily. Thank you. Share it with your friends. Crocus, baby. Nice job, guys. Talk to you all soon.